definitely one of the most unique geologies for wine growing anywhere in the world because literally we're the only part of California where part of the coast has actually literally broken off the tectonic plate and then been basically moved by moving tectonic shifts from a north-south orientation to an east-west orientation. And over 20 million years we went from a seabed to a mountainous range that ran north-south to being knocked off the tectonic plate like a little cookie of land and then that little cookie keeps being pushed north by the uh, Pacific tectonic plate. So what used to be north-south mountain ranges have now been pushed over 20 million years into an east-west orientation. So the warmer it gets in the interior, the more cool air that it pulls right off of uh, the Pacific Ocean, right at Point Conception. So if you think about uh, that area north of Santa Barbara that kind of looks like a little elbow sticking out of, out of the central coast of California, we're sort of right in the middle of that little coastline and in the middle of these purely east-west transverse maritime throat hills where in 1971, Richard Sanford made sort of either the brilliant or back then people thought he was crazy decision to grow Pinot Noir in the Santa Rita or what would become the Santa Rita Hills which was known as the western end of the San Ynez Valley. But the geology really starts as a seabed. The seabed uh, obviously rose up and then became alluvial and a lot of the old uh, mass extinctions of diatomes kind of uh, moved alluvially and, and mixed up into the soil as plants began to grow. And you ended up with a situation where we have massive amounts of calcium and silica in the soil which thicken the skins of the grapes and give us, gives us that wonderful mineral character and sort of a built-in concentration and intensity of the wines. So the Santa Rita Hills wines, I think, may be the darkest, richest sort of uh, Pinot Noirs that you find when they're, when they're brand new and young.